Alright folks, welcome to chapter 5. If all goes well when this chapter is over, you'll be able to hit play and you'll be able to move your guy and do some jumping. And notice he does not double jump, so jump, jump, nothing. So if everything works out well, that's where we're going to be. But there are three main problems in the book this chapter. The first one is they never had us create this ground check. So I don't know if he meant us to ch uh, take this and turn it into that because I still have no idea what this um, um, box item alt thing is or if that was from the first project that they kind of abandoned in the book. Uh, remember how there was there were two projects in the book. First there was one and then they kind of then they kind of moved to another project anyway. And but right away the the book starts talking about this ground check thing that supposedly is already made on page 78. As it just starts with, with the player object selected, click and drag the ground check game object from the hierarchy window. Well, we never created the ground check object. That's the first mention of the ground check on page 78. At least as far as I, I can find. So if you found it in the book before page 78, email me and tell me what page it is and I'll give you some extra credit. Um, but if not, that's kind of the first thing. So we gotta, we got to figure that out. So I'll, I'll show you where that stuff is. Um, the second problem is on page, I think it's 80. Go to page 80 in your book. And if you look at that script there where it says void fixed update, um, it's got a bunch of stuff. And then at the bottom of the, it says void flip. And void flip is actually a part of void fixed update. That is incorrect. You can't have the void flip has to be outside of the fixed update function. So your script is going to have four parts. It's going to have void start void update, void fixed update, and then void flip. So void flip is going to be the fourth function. It's not a function inside the fixed update function. And then the third issue is if you just if you keep page 80 open, if I open up the script here, bam! Alright, if I go here to void, if I want to do the fixed update. So this line here if you look at your listing, and I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six, the seventh line of you include spaces, your book says this rigid body 2D dot velocity. But if you look at mine, it says this get component rigid body 2D velocity. So there is a difference in the scripting between the version when he wrote this book, which I think was 4.3, and then our version 5.1. Now, this one kind of corrects itself. As long as you follow the things in the book and you write the script the way he wrote it, uh, other than the, the function thing that we already mentioned. When you go to save it and run the, the program, it should ask you uh, if you want to update the APIs and you want to hit yes. And I'll, I'll show you what that looks like you know, before, after we're done doing the coding stuff. Uh, so that one kind of corrects itself, but the first two issues we're going to have to correct um, as we're going through the stuff. So uh, just in case, I will copy this uh, and put it in your folder for week five or whatever week we're on. Uh, whatever, whenever we do chapter 5 and that way if for some reason after everything you've done you still can't get this to go then you can load it in your program and at least your, your stuff will work and you'll be able to move forward you do not want to skip this chapter and just paste this into your code and not learn what all these things do because while this controller will work for this game it might not work for other games and there's no way you can just copy a bunch of different scripts from the internet and make a good usable game that's going to sell and make you money uh, it just doesn't happen if it was that easy everybody would just be out there pasting stuff and, and doing it so keep that in mind i mean you guys are here to learn game development so you can actually develop good games so no shortcuts all right moving on what i did uh... when i was saving the stuff uh, 2D game. At the end of chapter 4 I saved the game and then I, I, I went to my project folder and I moved it over here and I renamed it chapter 4 completed. And then what I did was I just right clicked, copy, and then I went over here, clicked in the white space and then pasted. And then I took this copy and I right click and I renamed it and then I renamed it chapter 5 start. So I would start at the end of chapter 4. And that way if I screw this up when I'm doing chapter 5 and I screw it up so bad that I need to restart, I can just go back to chapter 4, make a new copy and then work on that. So it's up to you how you ever want to do it, but you don't want to just keep working on the base game. You always want to have backup copies um, in case something happens where you do something, where you make a big mistake, you can't fix it, and it's just easier to go back um, a little bit. 
So I'll open this chapter five start. All right, so I'm all ready. So at this point, all we had was if I hit play, my guy just falls down. He doesn't move. Moving the keys, nothing happens. Uh, I can hit player. There's there's nothing underneath player. Like it doesn't have a little arrow, meaning there's extra stuff. Uh, I can just move him around and hit play. And that's all he does. So the first thing we're going to address is the ground check. So to create the ground check, we're just going to go up here to Game Objects, Create Empty, and you're going to get an empty game object, which is really, it's just going to be a position on the map. There's no object actually there. It's just, it's like a marker that says, hey, this point is going to be this. So now we're going to call that um, ground check, G-R-O-U-N, and then capital C-H-E-C-K. So lowercase g, uppercase c, ground check. So now we have the ground check, but all it is is like a kind of a clear dot, so it's kind of hard to see. So you're going to click on this little box here and give it a blue color, and now it's a lot easier to see. And now we want to zoom in with the mouse wheel, and we want to make sure that we put that at where the ground is going to be, because it's going to say, hey, anytime I hit this level, this is going to be ground check level, um, this is what I need to do. So I'm going to click on my transition tool, and then I can move that all around. So I'm going to move it over here to kind of to the left, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit and move that over. And I'm going to put that down so that the arrow is like right there where the ground is. So my arrow points right there where the ground is, so that's where the ground is going to be. So as far as I know, page 78 is the very first place where they mention the ground check. And it says, like I'm on page 78 at the bottom, we're at number one. With the player object selected, click and drag the ground check game object from the hierarchy window into the ground check property in the inspector. So I I cannot find where it says ground check before page 78. So I have no idea. So if you guys find that, though, let me know, and I might give you extra credit, um, or at least a couple bonus points on your quiz or something. So once you have this created, and again, it's just a just a, a position marker that says, "Hey, anything below this um, is going to be ground." Uh, and then, so our script is going to have something that says, "Hey, if we're on the ground, we can jump, but if we're in the air, we can't jump," because we don't want to be able to jump, double jump, or or triple, quadruple jump, that kind of stuff. So that's why the ground check is in there. All right, now we can actually start Chapter Five. So when I open up Chapter Five, it talks about the the coding languages, um, Boo, C Sharp, and JavaScript. Um, if you're going to, really you can pick either C Sharp or JavaScript. Either one is fine for Unity. But it's it's an easier transition from C Sharp into C++ than it is from JavaScript to C++. At least that's my, my sentiment. And after you make a couple games in Unity, you might want to start making games in the Unreal Engine. The only reason we picked Unity is because there's just a lot more um, textbooks and tutorials and assets um, for Unity right now, like when we created the class in 2015, than there is for Unreal. So that was really the, un the only reason we picked Unity. Um, not because we prefer it over Unreal or anything like that. Really, they're, 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 they kind of both have their strong points and weak points. But if after a couple times of uh, making a couple games in Unity, you want to move over to Unreal, Unreal focuses on C Sharp, or I'm sorry, C++. So it might be easier if you learn C Sharp for Unity, uh, and then you can make the transition easier into C++. Plus, those are two mainstay, lang or mainstay languages, so almost everything out there, you can kind of use those languages for other stuff. All right, so that's enough about the languages. Then we talk about player movement, air control, acceleration, that kind of stuff is all self-explanatory. And then they jump right in on 74 and say, hey, open the first scene, uh, find the player game object, click the add component and choose new script. Then on 4 they say, name the script player controller, and in the project browser select the script and move it to the underscore scripts folder. So at number 5, you don't have a scripts folder. He never told us to make a scripts folder. <sighs> anyway, so let's make a script folder. You go here to Assets, right-click, Create Folder, and we're going to call this underscore scripts. Underscore scripts. Now, once you have that done, now you can create the other stuff. So if I go to the scripts folder, uh, click the Add Component button and choose New Script. Uh, you don't necessarily need to do it that way. 
Most of us just go to scripts, right click, create C sharp script. Boom, there's your script. All right, so that's three. Name the script player controller and ensure that the language is set to C sharp. So you can obviously see it says C sharp. So we're going to rename it to player controller. Did I spell that right? Oh, it's a Christmas miracle, I did. So now I have the character controller script. Uh, and then drag and drop the player controller script onto our player game object. So once that's done, grab this, drag it to player. Now you want to make sure you highlight the where it says, kind of like the whole box is around player. You don't want to see a line, well, although it's not going to show, I guess, on this one. So just drop it on player. So now if I go to player, we can see that the script is already on there. Um, that we just placed on there. So now player controller is now attached to the player, so whatever s the script says, uh, that's what the player can do. All right, and that finishes up page 75. Now, page 76, we're going to create the code that he gave us there. Um, so I'm going to go type that in real quick and pause the video, uh, and then when I'm done, we'll unpause that. So just in case you didn't figure that out, just double click on your script, let mono develop open. And right there's my script. So now I'm going to start on page 76. I'm going to type all this stuff in. So you can see public class player controller mono behavior is already there. Um, so I'm going to start right there and add the you know hide in inspector that kind of stuff. All right. So once I have my variables at the top, then it says you know make a void start. Oop, doop. did not add that. Uh, and I'm just going to take this part out. The the comment. That way my stuff kind of looks exactly like it does in there. And I'm also going to move that and that, Again, just so my stuff looks more like his in the book. So now I need another avoid fixed update. And I'm all set. So that's exactly where he leaves us on page 76 at the bottom. Now, most of these are self-explanatory. When we first start our game, you know, it says, is facing right is true. So we want to make a variable that says, I, I, am I facing right or am I not facing right? Because really, I can only face two positions. My sprite either faces right or it faces left. So when I first start, I am facing right because that's the way my sprite starts. And then is jumping. When I first start the game, I'm not in a jumping state. I'm not going through the air. Um, so I create that as false. Uh, and then I'm not on the ground either. My guy's up in the air, so is grounded equals false. So I'm, I'm not stuck on the ground. Uh, and then jump force at max speed. Again, those ones are kind of self-explanatory. Jump force. What's the force of my jump? How fast am I going to go in the air? And then max speed. How fast am I going to be able to move? Now, if I click on player, and I look under here, um, on, all I have is script. But if I save this, and I hit file, now whoop. So now I'm going to my script, I'm doing file, uh, and save. And if I give this a couple minutes, uh, you'll see uh, like max speed pop up here. There it is. So now I got the jump force, I got max speed, ground check, ground layers, things like that. So whatever variables you put here in your script, eventually they'll move over and then you'll be able to change them here without jumping back and forth to the script, which is kind of nice. So then the bottom two in our script were um, transform ground check. When that, Remember, that's just the marker that marked. That's the ground check thing that we made uh, at the very beginning of the video. That's just a, a location that says, hey, this is where the ground is going to be. So anybody, anytime my character is here, um, that means I'm on the ground. So that's the ground check. If my, my sprite is touching this, I'm good. And then I have a layer mask ground layers. And if we look, what does that do? Um, a layer mask is similar to the camera, can be used as, to filter game objects when casting r rays. So think about light rays and things like that, so that way they don't go past the ground. And then this last one, ground check radius, is just how much area on the ground do I have to occupy before I, I'm considered on the ground. At least that's my understanding of that. Um, so remember, radius is just you know the, the length from the center to the right, um, so it's 0.2. And then I have my start, void update, and my fixed update. So now I'm all done with page 76, so I can move on. Ooh, let me rephrase that. So I'm on the book, I'm on page 77 at the ground, or 77 at the bottom, and it kind of tells you, you know, ground check, this is what we're going to check to see if we're touching the ground. Um, ground layer, it's just the, 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 list, uh, the list of layers the game considers to be ground. 
and then ground check radius they say is the distance out from the ground check center that will test for ground so I'll test um, the ground you know point two of a unit and remember you know the, each block here is a unit so I'll, I'll check out to point two um, so as long as I'm within point two of the bottom of ground check then it'll say hey you are on the ground all right moving on to page 78 um, it says actually I'm just gonna all right, make sure I save that yep hey, hey get over here minimize that bad puppy all right it says with the player game object selects you want to click on player and we see this ground check here that doesn't have anything so what they want us to do is um, go to ground check and they want us to so click the drop down menu <laughs> and select ground under ground layers so layer and I'm not seeing ground let me check oh wait hold on I lost read up so don't do that what they want you to do and they kinda give it in a haphazard way like they start with one then they say so anyway here's what you want to do and this will finish up page 78 there you want to click on player and make sure that you're seeing the player controller script and you're seeing the ground check and you're, it's looking for a transform so now we're going to grab you want to just click one time on ground check and click and drag so I'm going to click and drag this into the transform or that area and then let go so now that'll be what I check for the ground check and then two says on the drop down menu for ground layers which is ground layers there make that ground but notice I don't have a ground layer so I need to create it. So what you're going to do is you're going to go up here to layers, edit layers, and we need to add a ground layer. Ground. And then now we can go back to player, click, and there's ground. So now we can be part of the ground layer. All right, so then we go to number three, click the add component button, add a rigid 2D body. Now by default you should on your player you should already have a rigid 2D body because it, it gets aut added automatically now with sprites. Um, so we did that. So that's already there automatically. So number four, check the fixed angle box. Now that was changed from version 4.3. What you want to do is click on constraints down here on rigid body and make sure you do freeze rotation so I want to freeze um, any rotation on the Z axis you know I want my character to be able to move left and right up and down but I don't want him to rotate um, or move back and forward so we're just gonna freeze that rotation and that way he won't we don't have to worry about him falling down that kind of stuff and that should finish up page 78 alright then page 79 has us grab our script go to fixed update um, and add two lines all right, so we do float move. Remember, input get axis horizontal references the input manager, and then we go to the horizontal. So now I can use A and D uh, to move on the horizontal plane. And then the the velocity of our rigid body will create a new vector three, and then we create the speed is going to be the movement speed times max speed, uh, and then we set his speed in relation to the y axis. All right, then we move over to page eighty. Um, 80 and 81 both have a whole bunch of script to type in so I'm just going to type the whole thing in remember if you don't understand what one of these things stands for check your book your book walks you through as you're making the script this is what this does this is what this does here's what ground check position is here's what ground check radius is that kind of stuff if you don't know what a rigid body is uh, if you can't find it in the book you know make sure you check the documentation of unity All right, I'm gonna pause the video and type this in real quick just be careful so I'm on page 80 and I'm working on the part on the left the top left and then after the flip, here's where it calls, there's the function call where it's calling flip. You need to go down two curly braces and then that's where you should have void flip. And now he's going to be his own function so he gets his own curly braces. So he should not, if I click on this brace, I should see the brace there. If you click on one of these and you're seeing a brace up here, that's wrong. Um, so void fixed update as it is contained in itself and then void flip is not a part of void fixed, up, fixed update. So as long as I click on this, that's where my stop is. So I'm all set. All right, let me finish the script for you. All right, so here's the code um, in that top left block of page 80. 
So notice I don't have any red marks except for this 2D. Um, uh, my rigid body uh, is red, uh, which is typically not a good sign. But we'll talk about that as we go. So now I'm just going to jump through and I'm going to work at the, I'm gonna, at the bottom of page 80. I'm going to start on this update and then I'm going to finish it on page 81. So let me type that in real quick. All right, so this one here uh, had uppercase, needs to be lowercase. That fixes that. Uh, I don't know why, but it never like, really likes velocity or, uh, or add force. So we'll see what happens when uh, we convert that API to the newest version. But I'm all done with page 80 and 81, so there's my script so far. Now for me, I'm just going to go put, turn to page 82 and put this last piece of the script in there um, at the top of page 82 in the void update. Uh, so let me pause this again. And here's where I'm kind of lost. If you look at the bottom of page 80, at the very bottom it starts the void update, if input get button jump, and then it has on page 81 it has the other three lines of code, if is grounded equal true, then it has the two this statements. But then page 82 says, hey, enter this code, but we just entered the code on page 54, or on page 80 and 81. So I'm totally confused. So apparently um, you don't need to add anything on page 80. So at this point, here's what I want you to do. Hit File, Save, and then come over to your game, and then here's where you get that update. So now you know the project contains scripts and so they use obsolete APIs. So if you hit I made a backup, go ahead, it'll update your code, um, and you should be good then. But whoa, what are all these errors? Come on, baby, fix yourself. What's going on? <laughs> So well, I'm going to clear these, and apparently I still have a whole bunch of these errors. So let's go through these one by one. So an object reference is required to access non-static member blah rigid body 2D velocity, and that is on line 34. So if I go back to my script, 34, what doesn't it like? Ah, don't want that. All right, I can see that I got three issues on line 34. So I think if we look at that, um, get component rigid body, and then another rigid body without a get component. So let's put a get component here. All right. Let's see if that solves that. Uh, yeah. File, save, and clear. And then going away. Ooh, 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 look at that. Set one away. So now we're on pay, or 40, line 49, and I bet it's kind of the same error. Let me look real quick. So line 49. Okay, so I got an issue here. What doesn't it like? All right, if I look. Um, it says rigid body again. So where is the word rigid body on page 49? Oh, there. Let's try that again. Oh, I need to work on my typing skills. Oh, duh. I'm missing that. Sweet! Alright. File, save. So apparently when you update it, uh, it added the get components to the front, but didn't add the get components to anything farther into the sentence. And clear. Come on, go away. Dude, no, 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 go more, go away. Hit play. Oh, and it worked! Alright, so I can move left and right, and... Whoa! What the... <laughs> Alright, I need to work on that jump force a little bit. Alright, let me turn that off. <laughs> that was awesome. Alright, so let me slow that jump force down. Did, did I not follow what the guy said in the book? Because I don't remember him jumping like that. Holy mackerel, Andy. Alright, if yours does that too, like now I'm at 200, that's not enough. Uh, hit stop. Uh, let's do 400, see how that goes. Play. Come on, baby. Jump. Oh, that's not too bad. Oh, that's still a little bit too high. Let's do uh, 350. Oh, hey, I'm double jumping everywhere. <laughs> Gotta fix that. 
But other than the, the double jump issue, and triple jumping, and quadruple jumping, <laughs> uh, you're pretty good. Alright, we're going to grab ground check. So grab ground check and move it to the player. Grab ground check, move it to the player, and then we're going to try that. Alright, so jump, jump, good. Jump, jump. It looks like every once in a while it just seems like there's something that allows me to double jump. But now I think that's good. So notice my character faces right, or faces left, right, left, right. So he's moving, so the flip thing is doing its job. Because all flip does is just flips the image around. So left, right, left, right, left, right, and my jump is not double jump. Oh, see, there it goes. So that's we'll still have to tweak that. But other than that, we're good. All right, so all set. All right, now it says on page 83, um, setting up a basic follow cam. So what we want to do is we want to position the camera so that it shows the scene that we like. So I'm going to move this over, and I'm going to use the tools and make sure I got that. And I'm going to position the camera here. Actually, I'm going to position. Uh, so you have to look at your your little camera preview here and decide if you want your character to be the center um, of the screen. If you do, put the camera. Make sure the camera is center lined up left and right with him. And then I don't want any of this brown space showing, so I got to make sure that I like. I don't want to see that. I want to see that. So now grab your camera and drag it to player. Make sure you don't do it with the little line thing. You want to make sure that the whole thing's covered. And so now he's a part of that. So now when I play, notice the camera stays focused on my player. Just like in Mario. And you're all set. Now from there, your book just talks about debugging. And if you skip the bottom of page um, 83, we already talked about the input manager last week, so you guys should be good with that. If you jump to page 85, um, they start talking about error handling, and this becomes very important later on uh, in the game design. So he has you take out a letter or two from, on page 86 from one of the values, and they, they show you like what happens. Uh, and then he goes on to have you add a couple more things to your script so that it creates a, a debug log file so you can find where these errors are most more easily. Because uh, like that one that we had where the get component thing was didn't show up on the second um, uh, rigid body um, you know, we I could probably I really I got lucky and just it was just experience that was able to find that. So other than that, um, doing that code, it's kind of it's, there's just a couple more pages where you put that stuff in and just to check for logs. Um, I do suggest you do that. Um, it will help you in the long run. Uh, remember, when we're in this class, we're designing you know real simple games that have already been kind of coded for us. So it's very easy, and there aren't a whole lot of errors. Plus, I'm walking in this through walking through this with you. But when you go to create your own game when you leave the school, you're going to need to be able to find these errors because now all the code is going to be yours and you're going to be grabbing pieces from other uh, places and you're going to be kind of mixing things together and you're going to have errors that you've never seen before. And you're not going to have a video to kind of point them all out to you. So make sure you go through the debugging section as well um, so that you can set that stuff up correctly. All right, and also make sure when you're done you do file, ah, save scene, file, Save project. And then you're all good. All right, so if you have any questions, um, let me know. But at the end of this week, you should be able to um, play your level, at least have your character walk across your level. And if you find out, like let's say I got these little blocks over here, you know, if I find out my guy can't jump high enough to get to the blocks, I either need to move the blocks, and I should not be able to go through the blocks like that. That's very bad. Um, I'll need to move those blocks either lower or I'll need to make my guy jump higher. So something like, so make sure that your level is playable um, at this point. Now obviously everything doesn't have to work. You're not going to see animations from your guy. He's not going to swim. He's probably not going to die when he goes in the water, stuff like that. But make sure that you can climb the, or that you can, I don't know if you can climb the ladders yet either. But make sure that any platforms you have like this um, are the correct height. Uh, and you can jump on to things that you mean for the character to jump on. Uh, and then you're good. All right, again, got any questions, make sure you drop me an email. Other than that, have a great week.